Welcome back to Mr. Ward's videos. Last lesson, we were introduced to monetary policy. We looked at who the Reserve Bank of Australia is, the objectives of monetary policy, the meetings to decide monetary policy, the three outcomes of monetary policy, and the relationship between the Reserve Bank of Australia and the government. Today, we are looking at how monetary policy is implemented, the impact of monetary policy on the economy, and a and we're going to review a statement of monetary policy. Information for today's presentation comes from the Reserve Bank of Australia website, Tim Riley textbook, Tim Dixon's textbook, and the Roskins website. I strongly advise checking out the re these resources for anything economic related. To review, the Reserve Board sets interest rates so it can achieve the objectives set out in the in the Reserve Bank Act 1959, that is, the stability of the current currency of Australia, the maintenance of full employment in Australia, and the economic prosperity and welfare of the people of Australia. These objectives have found practical expression in a target for consumer price inflation, CPI, of 2 to 3% per annum on average over the business cycle. By the RBA focusing on price stability, that is, maintaining a low and stable rate of inflation, the bank believes that it can assist in establishing a sound basis for economic growth in the long run. A low and stable rate of inflation can help provide an economic environment that is supportive of economic growth and therefore low rates of unemployment and economic well-being and prosperity. Many economists support the RBA's focus on price ability, although there are those who disagree. So the bank makes the decisions on the first Tuesday of every month, except January because they're hung over from New Year's Eve. At these meetings, the bank decides to either, one, increase the cash rate, which is a tightening of monetary policy. The aim of this is to decrease economic activity, but also to decrease inflation. Two, to keep the cash rate the same, which is a neutral stance for monetary policy. The aim of this is for economic activity to stay the same because inflation is right on track. And finally, the final outcome could be decrease the cash rate, which is a loosening of monetary policy. The aim of this is to increase econo economic activity and increase inflation. These decisions are designed to meet the objectives of monetary policy. So, once the board decides on the cash rate, how is it implemented? This is done through the Reserve Bank of Australia's Domestic Market Operation, DMO. The DMO has the objective of maintaining conditions in the money market so as to keep the cash rate as or near an operating target decided by the board. DMO, DMO involve the exchange settlement accounts. Every bank, Commonwealth Bank, National Australia Bank, ANZ, Westpac, has an ES account with the Reserve Bank. Just about every monetary transaction in the economy goes through these accounts. When you pay your electricity bill, the funds are effectively transferred from your bank account across the exchange settlement account of your bank to that of your, of your electricity company's bank and into the electricity company's account. Let's have a look at an example to better explain this. This is a very simplified example to demonstrate the ES accounts. In the top left hand corner, you can see a Commonwealth Bank customer owes $100 to an ANZ customer. This money goes out of the Commonwealth Bank's exchange settlement account and into ANZ's ES account, which is then transferred onto the customer. You can also see other transactions too. $70 from an ANZ ES account to a Westpac ES account. $200 from a Westpac ES account to CBA's ES account, and $80 from NAB's ES account to ANZ ES account. There will be billions of dollars a day with money moving in and out of the bank's ES accounts. At the end of each day, these accounts need to be settled. Have you ever seen that you must transfer money before 5 p.m. if you want to appear <laughs> In the, in the recipient's account the following day. This is because the money needs to be settled between the accounts. 
I've put the transactions from the diagram before into the table. As it can be seen, from transactions at the end of the day, the Commonwealth Bank and their ANZ have a positive ES balance, while the National Australia Bank and Westpac have a negative balance. The Reserve Bank requires each bank to ensure its ES accounts always have a positive balance. Banks that look like having a negative balance may borrow the difference from the reserve overnight at a rate of 0.25 percentage points above the cash rate. That is expensive if we're talking billions of dollars each day. While, the banks, while banks that leave funds in their accounts overnight are paid interest at a rate of 0.25 percentage points below the cash rate. So there is a disincentive to leave money leave large amounts of money in these accounts. These penalties are designed to encourage the banks to borrow and lend to each other overnight at the more attractive cash rate. So the exchange settlement account forces the commercial banks to interact with each other. If a commercial bank's exchange settlement account is in deficit at the end of the day, it will borrow money from a commercial bank who has a surplus of funds. At the same time, if a commercial bank has a surplus of funds at the end of the day, it will lend money to a commercial bank so they are not in deficit. In our previous example, the Commonwealth Bank and ANZ had a surplus in their ES accounts. They can then lend money to NAB and Westpac so they are in surplus. Banks can borrow from the RBA, but it is at a high rate. Banks can also leave their money in the ES accounts, but it tracks a low interest rate. So the system is designed for banks to lend and borrow money from each other. Now, the RBA intervenes in this process by creating an incentive for the commercial banks to move surplus funds out of their ES accounts. This affects the supply of money which banks can lend to other banks. The incentive for commercial banks to move money in and out of their ES accounts is a Commonwealth Government Securities, CGSs. This is a piece of paper which says, if you, the bank, lends me, the government, some money, let's say $10,000 for 10 years, we will pay you interest on this. This will be paid regularly, let's say quarterly. Commercial banks can buy and sell these CSGs with their surplus ES funds. If the RBA wants to slow down economic growth because inflation is getting too high, it will sell CSGs at an attractive rate that the commercial banks will want to buy these ES funds. This will decrease the money in the ES accounts and shift the, sur the surplus curve left. This will increase the cash rate as the equilibrium has moved from the change in supply. The reserve is done for an easing of monetary policy. Here is a diagrammatic representation of a loosening of monetary policy through the RBA's domestic market operations. On the vertical axis is the cash rate, and on the horizontal axis is the quantity of cash. There is a demand curve which is determined by the money held by banks in the ES accounts with the Reserve Bank. These funds are used on a daily basis by the banks in settling transactions between themselves. Also, there is a supply curve, which is the balance in each bank's ES accounts. This money is available to be lent to other banks if they are in deficit and need to move to a surplus for that day. If the Reserve Bank wants an easing of monetary policy, that is decrease the cash rate to increase economic activity, then the RBA wants to create a surplus of cash in the cash market. To achieve this, the Reserve Bank buys Commonwealth Government Securities, CSGs, from commercial banks. When the RBA buys the CSGs from banks, back from the commercial banks, the money goes into their ES accounts, thus increasing money available to lend to other banks, increasing liquidity. This shifts the supply curve right from S1 to S2. This decreases the equilibrium price from R1 to R2. Thus, the cash rate has decreased. By the RBA buying CSGs back from banks and putting money into their ES accounts to lend to other banks who are in deficit for that day. If the Reserve Bank wants a tightening of monetary policy because inflation is getting too high and they, and they want economic growth to slow, 
Then, the RBA wants to create a shortage of funds in the cash market to push up equilibrium. So, the RBA sells Commonwealth government securities to the commercial banks at an attractive rate. This removes cash from the commercial bank's ES accounts, which decreases liquidity. This shifts the supply curve left from S1 to S2. This increases the equilibrium cash rate from R1 to R2. Thus, the cash rate has increased. By the RBA selling the CSGs to banks and removing money from their ES accounts, we therefore have less money is available to lend to other banks who are in deficit for that day. So, the cash rate is the interest rate financial institutions pay to borrow or charge to lend funds in the money market on an overnight basis. The cash rate has a very strong influence on other interest rates and therefore helps to set the level of short-term interest rates in the wider economy. Mortgage and business loans tend to move broadly in line with the movement of the cash rate. The interest rate is the rate which is charged or paid for the use of money between financial institutions and lenders and borrowers. So there is a cash rate, which is between financial institutions. Then there is the interest rate, which is what you and I pay. This table best illustrates the impacts of monetary policy. If the Reserve Bank decides to increase the official cash rate, the interest rate will generally increase and borrowers will have increased mortgage repayments and thus reduced disposable income. Lenders, however, will have a greater return on investment, but less incentive to spend money. If the Reserve Bank decides to decrease the official cash rate, the interest rate will generally decrease and borrowers will have decreased mortgage repayments and thus increased disposable income. And lenders, however, will receive a less return on investments and want to spend in other areas. This diagram shows so well the effects of monetary policy. If the RBA decides to tighten monetary policy, i.e. inflation is getting too high, then 1. The RBA will sell securities. 2. This will lead to a shortage of borrowable funds. The supply curve will shift left. Three. This will increase the cash rate. Four, to maintain the profit margins for the banks, they will increase interest rates. Five, consumers and businesses will now have to pay more on existing debts. Six, consume, consumption and investment will decrease. And seven, economic activity will decrease. If the RBA decides to loosen monetary policy, inflation is too soft and or economic activity needs inflation, then 1. The RBA will buy securities from the bank. 2. There will be an excess of borrowable funds. Supply curve shifts to the right. 3. The, curve, the cash rate will then decrease. 4. To maintain margins, bank will lower the market interest rates. 5. Consumers and businesses will pay less on existing debt and new borrowers will find it easier to borrowable funds. Six, consumption and investment spending will increase. Thus, seven, economic activity will increase. And that is monetary policy. It is done by the Reserve Bank of Australia to ensure Australia meets the three objectives. That is, stability of the currency of Australia, the maintenance of full employment in Australia, and the economic prosperity and welfare of the people of Australia. After every RBA meeting to determine monetary policy, the RBA releases a statement outlining the decisions. This can be found on the RBA website. Have a quick read of this statement after the decision on the 7th of June 2016. You may want to pause the video here to read. You can see a number of factors are considered by the RBA. Global economy, advanced economies, emerging economies, China's growth rate, as it's one of Australia's major trading partners, commodity prices, financial markets, overall growth in the economy, business investment, labour markets, inflation, low interest rates and its effects, credit to business, lending standards in the housing market, supply of apartments and dwelling prices. All of these factors are taken into consideration when the RBA decides its final decision. 
I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. For more information about the presentation, check out the Reserve Bank of Australia website, the Ross Kittens website, the Market Economy textbook by Tim Dixon, and Year 11 Economics by Tim Riley. Thank you very much.